Hello everyone, this is Mike again for you and today this is just a great day. Producer Michael is with me and he is currently in Beverly Hills on a live Zoom call and we are just, you know, chatting a little bit about the passion, about watches and also his past. So yeah, hello, how are you? Hi, great to see you. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great and we have this lovely surrounding over here. Uh, thanks that you uh, have the time uh, and the, you give me the possibility that we can just, you know, talk a little bit. We, uh, we met recently over the internet. You did some uh, lovely reviews on some of my, uh, my videos on YouTube, and I appreciate them. They were very respectful and tasteful, and uh, thank, thank you for you. that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I saw that you have just a great watch selection, and the thing which I found most interesting about this is that you don't have all the random stuff, okay? For example, in this box, we have the basic steel models, gold watches, and all this, but in your collection, you have also watches which you don't see that often. For example, let me show, can you show me what you're wearing today right now? Hold on one second. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just, I, I don't know what to do with this chair to stop it squeaking. <laughs> <laughs> we need to leave that in the video 100%. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I'm wearing a watch that just about everybody wears. Um, maybe not. Uh, I am wearing this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the Degre Zono, full gold with a factory setting. Uh, one amazing watch. Huh? It's quite an interesting watch. The, uh, the entire case is diamond. It weighs a ton. Why did you bought this one? What was your intention? Why, why did you choose this? There's something very wrong with me. I, I'm maybe like, what's the bird that likes the shiny stuff? Um, yeah. There's a, is it the vulture? Not the vulture, but one, there's one of the big birds that likes shiny stuff. I guess that's me. I must be related somehow. But um, <laughs> I, I just like, I, I like different. I like flamboyant. And uh, fortunately, I'm, I'm able to buy these things and I like to be able to share them with people. Make Some people laugh at me. Some people say, wow, that's cool. I don't care. I just do it for myself. Yeah. And over the time, was it like this that you moved also the, the amount you spent on watches a little bit more higher every year? Or Well, I always told myself when I started buying watches, I would never, ever buy anything that cost more than $10,000. Uh, wow. That didn't last very long. It changed. Yeah. It went to like 15. And then I said, never again will I spend anything like this. And then it went to 20. And now we're in the you know what's, right? Interesting. So you, uh, you already told us in a different video that one of the highest possessions in terms of value uh, you bought for yourself was the day date, okay? Uh, this, this was around which year in, in Yellow Gold, which year you bought this one? So that was, uh, I'm trying to think, probably 1979, somewhere around there. Yeah, it must be. I, I also found something out that, you know, uh, at the age of 19, you came to Berlin to the Hanse studio, right? I came to Berlin, uh, I ended up at the Hansa Stone Studio, but before I ended up there, I was with the British Army as a civilian, I wasn't in the military, washing dishes and cutting grass and doing all the things that I didn't enjoy doing. And right now, can you speak also some German words until now, or do you understand, wenn ich Deutsch spreche, ist kein Problem? Nein, ich würde nicht sagen, es kein Problem ist, ist seit langer Zeit, ich Deutsch, seit ich Deutsch gesprochen habe, aber ich verstehe, Alice. Ah, wunderbar. Ja, sehr gut. Ja. So, wir können gerne machen, mehr aus Deutsch sprechen, wenn du möchtest. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, it's not a problem. We can switch to English. Uh, and um, yeah, during that time, you were also, you, you played the drums, right? I read that you started playing the drums around seven years old. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, somewhere around seven, eight years old. That's about right. Yeah. Yeah. My then, passion uh, forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I also yesterday, you know, I, I went into uh, I went into the internet and I got really deep, and then I, I, I heard one song from uh, Tidal Force. I tried to spot you in the back. Is that correct that you played uh, the drummer uh, in this song? That is correct. That is correct. Yeah. I think my hair was down here somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> the song was "A Man Rides Through." Was it this number one hit or that song? I think it was top. 10 um, mm -hmm. on the AOR, Adult Alternative, oh, what was it, Adult Alternative Airplay, no, AAA, AAA, Adult Alternative A Airplay, yeah, it was uh, in the top 10. And during that time, I mean, when you bought the first day date when you were 19 and then in 1993, can you, can you, you know, remember which watch you had on your wrist during that time? In 1993? Yeah. Um, 
I don't remember. I can't say I remember. Um, at that point, I might have had three or four watches. Uh, it, it, it wasn't like I was going out every week and buying a watch. And uh, I think I had maybe a couple of Rolexes, mm -hmm. um, and entry level, and I had an Amiga. And I think that was about it. Ah, okay. Hey, in terms of Omega, I have something really, really special today here with me. And uh, in the year 1969, Omega released the first and the only time one full yellow gold Speedmaster. Okay, I, 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 don't, I think President Nixon also got it as a gift. I don't remember if it was Nixon, but he got this watch. Okay, uh, and we have the possibility just 1,000. 14 pieces were produced during that time. It's a really special watch. No one has it on their radar. And currently it retails for around, let's say, 36,000 euro. This is approximately, yeah, uh, something under $40,000. This is a really special watch. Did you saw on that time, uh, did, uh, was this one on your radar during that time or was it not popular at all? This watch that you're showing right now, it's th yeah. this is the first time I have ever seen this watch. I didn't know it existed. It's a yeah. spectacular piece, and I promise back then, had I have known about it, it would have been one of my big goals to have it. And now, this is the first time. I don't know anyone on YouTube who had both watches next to each other, because right now, in the past year, Omega released one re-edition of the Speedmaster in yellow gold, and we have here... <laughs> Also, the re-edition. This is the massive version of the one I showed you right now. Uh, just a beautiful piece. Has the same look, but a little bit more solid uh, bracelet and everything. This is just a great watch. Retails, in fact, for the same price. That is a beautiful piece. Can you put them both next to each other so we can yeah. see? So how big is the case size on those? Interesting, interesting fact. Uh, since... Uh, the moon, uh, since the moon watch was released, it's always 42 mm. So uh, they are quite big in size, not too thick, so you can wear it to a suit. And uh, yeah, nice model, looks the same, just some small changes. Uh, the bezel is more durable right now. Um, yeah, awesome piece. That's spectacular. Wow, I, I didn't yeah. know about that piece. That's amazing. And to have both of them, that's pretty cool. So uh, if we talk a little bit about, let's say, more expensive watches, uh, we cannot miss the trend of Nautilus watches. So I know from the past videos that you also have, let's say, uh, one iced out. Is that correct? One iced out, uh, 5711? Two. Two. Okay. Besides them, you have also some other Nautilus watches or are they the only ones? I have the 5981R which okay. is the plain all gold one with no diamonds, which is by far my favorite of all the Pateks that I have. Um, the other two that I have, they're both aftermarket diamonds. I have a stainless steel version and I have a gold version, and they're both iced out. Ah, okay. So right now, what happened in the market is like this. Uh, last year, there was a big hype about Nautilus and the prices jumped, okay? For example, we have over here one a little bit more expensive watch. This one is the Perpetual Calendar. Uh, from Nautilus. I mean, uh, you probably know this one. The only problem with this, for example, uh, at first I sold the, f the ones for, let's say, 200,000, and now the price dropped down to 150. So, you know, if I, um, I'm always in the, in the position in, uh, in my business to take back a watch. So if I sell, for example, one for 200, and now the guy wants to sell it back to me again, it's kind of difficult. For that reason, I always recommend something more unique. And one watch which you have never seen before, I, I mean, during my time in the watch business, I just saw, this is the second one I saw, okay? This one is the 3712. It's, it looks like the one you probably know, but it has an old case from the ones, uh, from the 3700. So this watch is currently existing in a different reference number, but, on this watch, just approximately 700 pieces made it to the market. And uh, yeah, it retails for around, let's say, $110,000. Really incredible rare watch. And if you buy something like this, believe it or not, this will be great for your kids. And uh, yeah, I just can recommend checking something like this out. That's a beautiful piece. I am not familiar with that piece. Haven't seen it before. What are the yeah. differences between that one that you have there and the one that's very similar? 
So the, 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 the difference is that the case proportions uh, are slightly changed and also, I mean, this is, it's, it's ridiculous really, but uh, the uh, markers on the dial for the new one, one is left, okay? So on this one, you have one marker more. <laughs> it's to explain it to someone who's not in the game, you know, it sounds a little bit crazy, but uh, yeah, and also the points, there are some red dots at the power reserve indicator, and uh, also this is different, yeah? And that's why you pay uh, almost uh, 40,000 euro more. Well, it keeps you unique, right? And yeah. that, <laughs> how many of those exist? Uh, 600 to 700 pieces worldwide. Yeah, this, this is really something special. And uh, to, you know, switch a little bit, um, one great story which I, which, which I want to put out, I just told it before, uh, I saw one interview with you and uh, you were sitting next to a nice lady and uh, then she asked you, I don't know what the exact word, what, what is the what's the strange thing you do sometimes? And then you told the audience that <laughs> in the hotel, <laughs> your assistant, they called the hotel and you ordered a bucket of ice bucket full of M&Ms and they need to sort out the green ones. Do you still do something like this nowadays or? I'm embarrassed now. Um, <laughs> no, I haven't done that for a while. That was the, the, the quote, what do you call those rock star days? Um, not that I was ever a rock star, but yeah. um, I did it because I could, and it was expected. Anybody that was out on the road touring back then, they all had crazy idiosyncrasies, stuff that they just did. So my thing was fill a nice bucket full of M&Ms and have somebody pick out the green ones. Not that I didn't like the green. Was it green ones or brown ones? Green, it was, green, it was green. It was green. Um, yeah. It's not I don't like. I didn't eat any of them. I just did it because I could, which is really mean, yeah. but it was fun. Yeah. How I mean, did I you find this stuff out? That's really remarkable. Yeah, I mean, I cannot, I cannot imagine how it was to be alive at that time. Also, when I heard about the songs you produced, you know, one, one sticked out to me from uh, Engelbert Humper, Humpernick. Uh, quando, quando, quando? Humperdink, yeah. Quando, quando, quando. I think everyone also here in this room, everyone knows this song. So how was it to, to be live on this set to produce this this? hit everyone in the whole world knows. Well, um, Engelbert was probably and is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And his voice is just remarkable. I became very good friends with Engelbert. I used to play golf. We used to play golf together. And uh, just a great, great guy. His voice is an, an instrument in itself. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful sound that comes out of his mouth. And he's one of the very few artists that actually does a song in a single pass. Um, wow. It, you know, most people won't know how you record a record, actually. But when, when you record a record, you do normally do it in sections, sometimes line by line, sometimes word by word, depending on how well it's going. And you punch in sections to make it sound perfect. Not with Engelbert. He was just one through and wow, amazing. Wow, oh, amazing. Yeah, this is really a nice story. And the song is also uh, amazing. And uh, yeah, in terms of security for me, it's always very important that I have uh, my security stuff with me. And I just read one thing that you are honored by San Diego Sheriff Department that you are you're having the, the, the badge for honorary member. How was this story? I mean, no. It might sound crazy, but there's actually three police departments, uh, sheriff's departments that have given me that honor. So I have three, uh, really? two of which are in Florida, one's in California. And uh, it's great because you get to play with all the guns, you get licensed to carry guns. And, you know, you, you know it, it's fun. I, I'm not a gun lover, but, you know, unfortunately, in, in times that we live and the society we live in, it's necessary. Yes. Um, I have security too. My security guys have qualifications. They don't have the same qualifications I do. So it's kind of fun. Really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you like to wear expensive watches and then we cannot miss this brand. Right now with me is one uh, RM55. One, this, you know, I, I'm in love with. This is the Baba Watson white ceramic. This one is not in your collection. You have the RM11 in uh, titanium and rose gold. This is a little bit lighter. You can see through the movement. And you, you in fact, you know this reference? Uh, very, very well. I used to own that watch. Oh, really? Yes. It's, I mean, for me, you know, if, if I can imagine uh, being in California or so and wearing this watch in, on summer day on the beach, this is just the best watch for this occasion. Huh? 
So my story with that watch is Richard Mille is one of those very strange brands. I don't know what it really is all about. It's a new brand. The marketing is absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, I've, I've owned quite a few Richard Mills. I still do have some Richard Mills. They're not the greatest movements in the world, in my experience. Even mm -hmm. when you change the date on them, you have to wind the hands around maybe three, four, five times around 12 o'clock before yeah. it will actually change the date. I don't know if you've experienced that. Um, the hype is insane. The watch that you're holding doesn't feel like $200,000, does it? No, not at all. It's about, I think, 50 to 60 gram, very light. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you, when you hold a Rolex or, or when you hold any high-end watch, they feel great. Richard Meal, uh, I don't know. I have some, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting myself here, but I just, don't, I just don't quite get it. Do you get it? So the thing is, uh, since the last two years, it just went up for RM. Before we had the problem that, um, for example, the Italians had the opportunity, they, there were shops like Rolex shops, but they had the possibility to sell RM watches. So uh, during that time, let's say five years ago, uh, they offered great discount. You had RM11 uh, for 50% off, but then they, uh, thank you. <laughs> so right now, you know. Uh, Nobody's bringing me any drinks here. Come on guys, where are you? <laughs> No, because right now it's Ramadan, so uh, the sun is down, so I can drink something. This is great. So, <laughs> At one point, RM changed the policy. Right now, it's like this. You go to their boutiques, you get zero discount, and you need to qualify. And if you want to buy one, it's just really, really difficult. And um, that's why if you, ha if you want the watch, you cannot get it. So it's kind of working like this. And in Germany, the brand is very popular and it keeps evolving. I, I personally stand behind this brand because in this niche, there are no competitors and I think they will be very successful also in the future. I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, I think it's a current hype and I think it's gonna collapse like a brick. I really do. Really? Yeah, yeah then, then we will see in the future, maybe, you know, maybe the prices will... <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, anytime. Anytime. <laughs> yeah, um, so uh, what, what, what would be very interesting for me is uh, at the end of the most videos I saw from the interviews you gave, um, you always had yeah, one advice for the younger audience. What I read until now is that the most of the time you said that they, the audience should not give up and they keep going. If you made it, then they also can make it. So at this point, what would you tell yourself when you were 18? What would you tell yourself? I was driven when, when I was, um, when, when I was at 16, 17 years of age, uh, I, I told myself that I wanted to be successful and I was prepared to do whatever it takes to become successful. Um, I didn't do it via qualifications. I didn't do it via schooling. I did it because of my own personal motivation. And I believe if you tell yourself that you want something badly enough, you can do it. There's no reason that anybody can't be successful. And successful isn't necessarily money. It's achieving a goal that's obtainable. You set yourself steps and you go slowly, slowly up those steps. Each time you achieve one of the steps, you set yourself another one. You just keep going until you ultimately achieve what it is you want to do. And I, I believe everybody can do that. It's a matter of falling and getting back up. Think of it like this. When you lift weights and you, you, you're constantly lifting weights, you're breaking the muscle, you get broken down, it grows bigger and it yeah. goes stronger. And it's exactly the same thing in business. You're gonna to have to fall many, many times before you get up and you say, well, did it. Very nice. So, I mean, for, for your life, you have approximately what I noticed so far, around 63 gold and platinum records. You achieved great success. Are there some things which you want to, to grab and want to fight? Are there some major things would you say this I, I want to achieve until now or uh, I mean at the, uh, or are you you know very happy in the place you are right now I don't I don't think I'll ever be happy where I am I want <laughs> to continually achieve um, it's not specific I don't say I want to do a specific thing I want okay. to continually evolve I want to get better I want more knowledge I want to be better at what I do and and I think if you live with that mentality you'll always be able to move forward and you'll always gain information, which in turn turns into success. Great, very great. 
one of the last sentence. Yeah, thank you very much for this interview, yeah, that you find the time and uh, producer Michael, I, I hope that we have the possibility one day to meet each other. I, I am convinced that's going to happen. Yeah. Hopefully the world will open up again soon and we'll be able to yeah. fly and do the th things we used to do before. I want to wish you all the luck in the world with your new venture. Um, it's Thank not you. difficult to take on a new business, but that's the living proof that you can do it. Yes. And uh, wish you all the best. Everybody that's watching this from my channel, please check out Mark because he's a great guy. So glad I uh, met him and I look forward to meeting you too in person. Thank you very much. So if you like that video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and also all the informations from the uh, top s uh, 10 sexiest men, uh, sexiest musician from 1996, producer Michael. The oh, link no, is in the description. No, 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 no. <laughs> so please check him out and I see you guys next time.